my talk. Here we go. Uh. Ah, he said he living life as a gringo. Where you question, where you fit, and every time you mingle, they say you do this with not enough that. My rapping is really bad. <laughs> this life as a gringo. Yes, hello and welcome to another episode of Life as a Gringo. I am Dramos, of course. Hope y'all had an amazing weekend. So today's episode, we're going to be testing something out. I'm not going to give you too many details. I'm just messing around with this format right now uh, for another idea that I've been been working on. I want to see what y'all think. Uh, not too much of a crazy difference, but definitely certain ways that I might integrate some ideas or some of the people I might lean on as far as where we're getting our information for these topics for this topic. Um, might be a little bit of a switch up. I'm kind of just testing the waters here for an idea that I'm I'm working on right now currently. And for that, I wanted to to focus on the idea of our ego, right? And and not only just talking about our ego as human beings, but the idea of of diminishing our ego. And I'm going to tackle it not in in a way that probably most people would think of when they think of ego. You're probably thinking of somebody who's cocky. Um, and, and I guess to a degree that would lend itself in, but I'm more so talking about the stoic sort of definition uh, and examples of, of ego and how it relates to this sort of entitlement that I think a lot of people have and, and myself included at certain moments throughout the course of my life. So I, let's just get into it. I'm really excited to dive into this topic. So let's do our deep dive. And of course, I'll also take some of y'all's answers to a question I put out where I ask a gringo segment, and I'll give you a couple of specific examples of people uh, who are the good and bad of this particular topic in our Mijente segment. But first, let's do our deep dive in a segment we call for the people in the back. Say it louder for the people in the back. Say it louder for the people in the back. All right, so... First and foremost, let's kind of define what I'm talking about when I when I say ego, because, again, I know a lot of people are going to think, oh, somebody who's cocky, right, who is egotistical. And I'm talking about it more so in like the way philosophy refers to it in like the sort of stoic sense. So you have Ryan Holiday, who's one of my favorite authors. Please go check him out. The Daily Stoic podcast. Incredible. And he defines ego in the, in the way that we're using it as, quote, an unhealthy belief in your own importance. It's the it's that petulant child inside every person, the one that chooses getting his or her way over anything else. And also when it comes to this idea of like stoicism and philosophy, stoicism, um, they say a practicing stoic has goals that they want to achieve and they work hard in pursuit of those, go of those goals, but they also know that they're not entitled to success. So let's kind of tackle this on, on two levels, sort of the idea also of just putting in that work, right? Like so many people want so many things they have so many ideas but their execution fails right they're not consistent with the content they're putting out they're not consistent in the learning that it takes to be great at what they're they're chasing after right like i love this quote from jay-z he says you can want success all you want but to get it you can't falter you can't slip you can't sleep one eye open for real and forever and and i love that because he's talking about regardless of how much you want success, regardless of how much you want to achieve something, that means nothing unless you are consistently out there doing the work to try and get it. And I love that last part where he says forever, like it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop just because you obtain, you know, one certain thing, like it never ends. You are always putting the work in towards the things that you want. And I'll show you a perfect example of that you know, someone who's incredibly successful, but still is out there making great strides and putting their ego aside um, for the greater good of finding more and more success. And even just building upon this, because I think what we're talking about is discipline at the end of the day, right? And this quote from Jay Balvin uh, really kind of sums it up as well. It says, quote, I obviously work really hard, but I also have the capacity to dream really big and have the discipline to materialize those dreams, right? So it's working hard. It's, it's dreaming big. And that's also having the discipline to actually bring those dreams to life, right? The discipline that allows you to put in that work each day to sacrifice, you know, whatever it is you have to sacrifice in order to achieve a certain goal. I feel like, you know, and to kind of build off of that, I feel like there's like this threshold that many of us kind of cross, right? On our path to success, we may have like, you know, if there's levels to this, we may have gone and, and graduated to the next level on our journey, right? And we oftentimes think that, you know, we, we are too good to go back to ever do anything 
um, that would take us back down to that level, right? Sometimes you got to take, you know, one step back to make two giant leaps forward. You know what I mean? That's probably a fucked up way of saying that saying, but I think y'all get it. Like, you can't be too good to do the grunt work. And obviously, to a degree, there's probably different kinds of thresholds, right? But but actually, you know what? I'm, I'm checking myself right now as I say that. I think that that, that kind of goes against this, right? Because success by any means is necessary, right? So if that means that I need to take a pay cut, right, to free up some time, um, then so be it, right? Like like all that kind of stuff. And I kind of touched on this a bit when it came to weathering the storm in my my last episode. But it, But it's basically like giving up that part of yourself that's too proud to maybe make a sacrifice at this point in your life, right? I think so many people say, oh, I'm just so used to living a particular lifestyle. Well, if that's the case, you're allowing your ego to step in front of, you know, potentially finding the success that you're searching for, right? Because if that certain lifestyle that you're used to hinders you from having the free time or the extra finances you need to make your 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 dream a success, then it is a hindrance and your ego is getting in the way. And then on the flip side of that, as much as you work towards it, you set goals, you do all of the above, the reality is like you're not actually entitled to winning, right? You're not entitled to actually achieving that goal. And that's a really harsh kind of reality. And that's something like I've had to check myself on, right? Where I thought I'm a good person, you know, and it's, oh man, I, I can think of times where I was just like angry praying to God, like, you know, my younger years, like, God, why? Like, why can't you just allow this one thing to happen? You know, I'm a good person. I don't rip people off, you know, um, I, I'm somebody of, of sh strong moral character. I'm doing things the right way by putting in all the hours, the time, the effort, the hard work. Why can't you allow this one thing to happen? And the harsh, the harsh reality is that regardless of how many hours I've put in, how much time, how much effort, how much money I've put into something, how much love I've put into it, I'm not guaranteed to find success with it. I'm not owed success from it, right? And I know that's a bit deflating for a lot of people and even myself where I, I preach this message of putting the work, putting the hours and something will pop up. There's also a good chance that it might not be the thing that you expected that pops up, right? Like I believe that you'll find and stumble upon some sort of opportunity, but the main goal that you were chasing after, there's no guarantee that that's actually going to happen. To me, the only guarantee is that you'll probably stumble and fall upon something, some sort of opportunity just by proxy of putting in that much time and effort. But again, you are not entitled to anything. I think this kind of lends itself to why people make such a big deal about the journey, right? Because if you're telling yourself that the, the goal itself like is the thing, right? Like reaching that goal that you've set for yourself is the thing that you're chasing. What if you never reach that, right? That means that you've allowed yourself, like what if you said like, I'm going to be miserable until I reach this goal, right? I'm not going to allow myself to love this. I'm gonna have tunnel vision straight ahead, not thinking about the present moment, only thinking about that future goal when I achieve it, how great it's gonna be. And, and that's why people say the pursuit is really the win because that, that goal, that achievement may never come. But what you got while chasing that goal, what you got along the way, you need to find a way to make that enjoyable, right? Going off of what I had planned on talking about, because I'm just kind of having that revelation, you know, it's like, it's like, that's why the goal isn't as important because the goal, while it's great to strive for it, it's never guaranteed. You have no entitlement to it, right? Over somebody else, regardless of how hard you might've worked. That's why it's so important to value the journey there and value every other moment. To me, that also leads us into gratitude. Why is gratitude so important? Because gratitude allows you to appreciate all that you have right? Rather than thinking about all that you don't have. And I think when you're able to start putting that ego to the side in this way of, of thinking that, you know, success is inevitable for you and it's a given, you really allow yourself to kind of come back down to earth and just appreciate everything that's around you as you're on your journey. And, and for those who aren't kind of familiar with stoicism, you know, it's just an ancient method of philosophy, but that kind of is the way that they think. They they believe in a sort of, you know, this is something I got from, from my time with the Hoffman process, but like the idea of just being, right? Like like just being in the moment, good, bad, indifferent, just be with, with the moment that you're in right now. Be with whatever you're feeling right now. Like just experience it. That's all that matters. It's all that matters is the present moment that you're, you're, you're experiencing right now. And then on top of that, I think the beauty of it is that when you do hopefully achieve some of these goals that you've been chasing, that success feels that much sweeter, right? 
it doesn't feel as empty as success often does. And listen, I'm somebody who, in my mind, you couldn't tell me I wasn't going to achieve so many of these things, you know? And I, and I think it definitely made me have a lack of appreciation for these things, right? Because I was so convinced that I was going to get these things that I deserved them that when I got them, it was like, yeah, that's right. This is exactly what I deserve, exactly what I've wanted. And while it felt, you know, pretty good in the moment for the short term, I think that that belief that I was entitled to this thing or that it was guaranteed for me, it definitely took away from some of the joy and appreciation and gratitude um, that I, I should have had for achieving that goal, right? I feel like that's probably a key. And, and I haven't been able to really test this out completely because it's all kind of new things I'm learning, even as I talk to y'all. Knowing you're not entitled to getting that, that goal completed, knowing you're not entitled to success, regardless of how much effort you put into it, it kind of makes it that much sweeter. Knowing that there was a good chance that you wouldn't have gotten it, right? That you wouldn't have been able to achieve that. Knowing that, how much more do you appreciate it? And I think that's what it's all about. Is like this, and I think that's what they're kind of getting to with people like Ryan Holiday when they talk about this idea of like ego being the enemy. You know, ego can be the thief of joy, right? And the last thing I want to touch on is, is that quote of, you know, the one that chooses getting his or her way over anything else, right? Like your ego can lead you to trampling anybody that's in front of you just for the sake of getting the thing that you want, you know? And I don't think that's any way to live either, right? Like, I don't want to find success and then look behind me and it's just like, you know, a trail of, of broken people and fire and damage and all these different things, right? Like, I don't want to ruin other people just so that I can feel good about myself and find some sort of success, you know what I mean? Like, that's that's that sort of entitlement, right? Like, fuck everybody else, fuck what... But everybody else has to experience as long as I get mine. That's just a terrible, terrible way to live. You know, like that's not to me real success. That's just a, a recipe for living an incredibly lonely life. One where you'll never stop chasing, you know, for other things and trying to find that fulfillment because you're just causing havoc and wreckage everywhere you turn. And that actually perfectly leads me into our mi gente segment where I'm going to give you some examples of people who have found ways to put their ego aside in this sense and who have ah, really not been able to get their ego under control and have left that carnage that I speak of. All right, so I want to give you a couple examples, good and bad. Let's start with, um, let's start with the bad because I feel like that's kind of where I left off uh, before we were, we're in that break. I think this is kind of an easy one, but to me, Trump is an example of somebody whose ego got the best of them. And he actually, his ego got the best of him in like the traditional sense that we think of ego as somebody who's like cocky and just thinks too much of themselves, you know, but, but also in like, but also in like this, this stoic sense of, of feeling entitled and having this unhealthy belief in his own importance, you know, and at the end of the day, if you have your eyes open and you're you're paying attention to everything that went down with him, like he really literally, quite literally has left our country in like dire circumstances as far as, you know, our relationship to one another, as far as democracy as a whole. We know it like his his path to fulfilling his own enjoyment and, and patting himself on the back and feeding his ego has quite literally put this country in a really dark place. And the irony of all of it is that when you kind of break it down, like aside from the fact that, you know, he was kind of this spoiled brat who got, you know, money from his rich father and all these different things, like he actually has a bit of a Cinderella story. If you really break it down, it's like nobody expected him to defeat Hillary Clinton in that election, right? I don't think he himself probably, if he was honest, he probably, you know, expected that. So he has this incredible story of being the underdog, winning and and being loved by millions and millions of people, right? And quite frankly, he probably could have won a second election had it not been for how badly he he handled COVID at the beginning. And again, that was a lot of ego, right? Not wanting the doctors to talk or or not allowing the experts to really take the reins, you know. He he wanted to do deal with things the way he did and hide things and, and all of the above um, to save his own face, to save his own ego. And as a result, people were really distraught about what happened in this country, you know, in, in 2020. And, and 
by most margins, by most estimations of people, that's a big part of why he lost because that race was incredibly close. And had it not been for COVID, he probably would have won re-election. And then when you take it a step further, when you think about January 6th, his his ego and and in the stoic sense and in, in, in kind of Ryan Holiday's definition of, of ego being the enemy, he came to the idea that he gets his way over anything else. And unfortunately, that anything else was the lives of, of Americans and and democracy in this country as we know it, right? He felt so entitled to winning the presidential election that he'd rather burn the country down than, and I laugh because it's just so ridiculous, he'd rather burn the country down than push his ego to the side, right? And this is exactly when you hear ego is the enemy, that's exactly what they're talking about. And because aside from COVID, he he could have gracefully left office and he would have had a really interesting legacy, you know, a lot of negative things, but there are also a lot of people who truly loved him, you know, and and because of letting his ego lead the way, he allowed himself to ruin whatever legacy it is that he had left. And then I want to bring up, and I want to bring up now a good example of, of somebody putting their ego to the side, and then we'll kind of like, uh, I'll kind of quickly tie a different things together that I feel like might be relevant for our lives. But a person that I think is somebody who's great at putting their own ego aside is is Drake, right? Because Drake is arguably the biggest music artist in the entire world, right? But I love this because I think Drake, if you really look at him, he, he's not allowing himself to be led by his ego because when he puts out a project, when he makes new music, you could tell that, that he knows you're not entitled to anything, right? Like regardless if you are Drake, you still have to deliver just because you are, you know, the artist of our generation. Like people aren't just going to roll over and, and, take in random bullshit that you throw out there, right? Or at least not consistently. So if you look at whenever Drake releases, you know, a project, like he took his time with this last one, right? Like people were really asking for it. It was supposed to, it got, kept getting, kept getting delayed, delayed, even got pushed, you know, past where um, he wasn't going to be able to qualify for this year's Grammys, right? But he wanted to perfect it. And a part of perfecting that was also, Drake has always done this, working with kind of younger artists, right? Artists who are that next sound and he kind of hops on there and he gets a lot of criticism for it. But to me, this shows somebody that says, regardless of the fact that I'm Drake and I've been that guy, in order for me to stay on top and, and stay at number one, I need to be able to move with the times and change with the times, right? Like regardless of, of my history, that number one doesn't ju isn't just guaranteed, right? That's somebody putting their ego aside and, and hitting up these younger artists and being like, yo, I want to do a track with you hitting up these younger artists and saying like, I want to, I want to ride on, on your wave that you have right now. And again, people critique him for that. But to me, that's the ultimate form of putting your ego aside for the greater good of what you're trying to achieve. And I think that that's, what's important. Realize what it is that you are trying to achieve, you know, and understand that that is all that matters. Now, again, you don't have a guarantee. You're not entitled to actually achieving these things, but like, but it still is incredibly important to have goals. To me, that's what keeps us breathing. That's what keeps us moving in this life, right? Having ideas and, and trying to bring things to life. That's what keeps us going in this life, at least me personally. And in order to achieve these things, you have to just keep on moving, right? Keep on working. And you can't be worried about what it looks like from the outside looking in, right? Like you can't be worried if... People are looking at you like, what are you doing with your life? You know, like, it's like, no, listen, I'm like, regardless of how it looks to them, you know that the moves that you are making are with that greater goal in mind, right? I think a lot of people get caught up on, you know, oh, I used to hold up this position at this last job, so I can't accept anything less, right? I have this degree, so I can't accept anything less than this pay. And I'm not telling you that you should be taking less money. I'm not telling you that you you know, should be taking less of a, a position than you're used to. But you have to look at it from a bigger perspective than just that. Does me taking this momentary setback actually play into the greater goal that I have for myself? And if the answer is yes, then you know what? Sometimes you got to eat shit for a little bit to get to where you want to be. And if it doesn't, then keep it moving and look for something that you think you deserve. I feel like I know I've been talking about this a, a bit uh, on, on some of the, the recent episodes, but I'm kind of really defining it now and realizing, you know, that I'm, I'm talking about not allowing your, your ego to stand in your way or not allowing your ego to, to lead you. You know, that's the main thing is like, how do you fight against that? And, and that's what it comes down to. It's like, okay, well, if the greater good is at 
the forefront of my mind, then that's all that matters, right? I don't care if I have to take a step back to, to then be able to jump three steps forward. I don't care how I get there. All I care about is the greater good, right? I'm not too good to do anything as long as it is something that gets me closer in some sort of way towards my greater goal. Like, like I can remember multiple times throughout the course of my career um, applying for jobs or hitting up people that I would like work for free or help them out, whatever it was. Um, and people saying to me, like in the interview process, like, but why are you here? This feels like it's beneath you. You know, I'll, I'll give you I'm not going to beat around the bush. It was in radio for the most part that I can remember this. I remember being in an interview for a smaller market radio station in New Jersey. And they were like, this doesn't make sense. You're working in New York City. You're already there. That's where everybody else is trying to get to. But instead, you're trying to come here. Why? And yeah, from the outside looking in, it sounds crazy, right? Why would you want to go to some small time radio station when you literally are working at the biggest radio stations in the world? But what I knew at that time was my greater goal was to be on the radio doing my own shows in New York City. And in New York, the number one radio market, especially during that time, people weren't they weren't letting you get on the radio for the first time, you know, or the second time. They were generally speaking, they weren't just letting, you know, uh, people with no on-air experience get on the radio, even if it was like at two in the morning. Like it just didn't happen for the most part. So I knew that. Let me go take this other radio gig for like eight bucks an hour, or whatever the hell it was. Like half of what I was getting paid, which is even still even, isn't even a lot of money, but half I was getting paid at the time, um, because I know that it's building up my experience, so that when I do go to my boss in New York, I can tell them, listen, I have an actual demo. Like this is me live on the radio in another market. Like I can handle being live. I know what I'm doing. And that's exactly what happened. I did that for, you know, maybe a year between two different small market radio stations, um, maybe a little bit longer. And then eventually I was able to go and pitch to the people in New York and, and stay on them. And I was able to be on the radio in New York. But again, I had to put my ego to the side. Right. People were saying, like, why this like people were like to the outside world. It was like, this looks bad. Like, are you that desperate? You're going to one of these really small radio stations, you know, and no offense to anybody's on maybe a small radio station. I think it's an incredible place to, to hone your craft. but compared to New York, the amenities at these radio stations was was, you know, so part of what I was used to, you know what I mean? And and even the people that were working there like full time, some of them had second and third jobs, you know, they like they were just doing this for for pure love, you know what I mean? So like very different environment than what I was used to in New York radio, but I knew once again I was going to cut my teeth and, and had to put my my ego to the side of of when it seemed like I might be, you know, um doing something that was beneath me. I knew that for me, it was helping aid me in achieving that bigger goal that I had set out for myself. But had I allowed my ego to trip me up, I would have been like, nope, New York or nothing. I'm already here. I'm not going anywhere else. You know, I'm not going to do anything that's beneath me. Uh, I'm, I'm already here in New York. Y'all y'all need to come come to me. And they would have just told me to go fuck myself, right? Like the opportunity probably, good, opp good chances are the opportunity probably would have never, never come or at least not that quickly. And that's what I mean. You got to be got to be strategic and you just have to not care about what it looks like. You know, and don't allow that part of you that is trying to keep up with the Joneses. Don't let that part of you lead yourself, essentially. And with that said, let's get into our Ask a Gringo segment where I ask you all a question and you give me your answers. Ask a Gringo. All right, so as we always do in our show, I ask a question to my followers at DJ Dramos on Instagram if you want to be a part of the conversation. This week's question is super simple. I just asked, do you think your ego helps you or hurts you? Why? And I ask this question specifically because I know a lot of people think of the word ego and think that when they get led by their ego, like that's what lets them walk into a room, you know, like chest out, head high and ready to take on the world. And I think to a degree, I mean, obviously, we see people like, you know, Donald Trump uh, finding success by just bulldozing his way through life, essentially. But as we also saw, I think that methodology catches up with you. And if you don't learn how to hone it and and how to sort of uh, use it in a healthy way and channel it and find other ways to actually, you know, achieve the things that you want in this life, it will eventually destroy you, as I you know mentioned with our former president. Now, let's see a few responses here at Bren J Life Coaching says hurts me because when I'm too worried about my ego, I end up not showing up so I don't fail or I show up in a small way. So it's not even noticeable if I fuck up. Absolutely. And I think this is to me, this is ego on, on multiple levels of like the way we think about 
normally ego and then also kind of the way we're talking about it when it comes to like the stoic philosophy i think when it comes to the stoic philosophy i think what you're what you're displaying here is is being a little bit too interested in the outcome right as opposed to the present moment which i'm very much guilty of as well i actually find myself um at least in the past this was an issue of mine where i would minimize myself uh in crowds of especially with like successful people you know if i was in a room with successful people I would minimize myself and miss out on on great opportunities potentially because I wasn't showing up as my, you know, full self, my authentic self. And I think, you know, when I say that being obsessed with the outcome, it's like you get all in your head and I say you, I mean, the proverbial you, I, I, I did this as well. But like, you know, we can all get caught up in our own head of what we want to happen that we then in the moment forget about just making a positive contribution to whatever situation we're in right be it being in a room full of people regardless of how successful they might be like getting so caught up in wanting to make an impression on them and being obsessed with the outcome of of making an impression on them i fail to be present to the moment and just be someone who's interesting to talk to right and i think that leads back to this idea of like the outcome doesn't matter you know what i mean like this present moment is really all that matters the path is all that matters and obviously like it's hard to be like well the outcome it's hard to like accept the outcome not mattering i think obviously to me that's sort of just like to trick your brain into like operating in a certain way of being present but i think the reality is that i think the the real kind of thing behind that is if you truly are obsessed with the present moment and just showing up the best way you can in the present moment and just being you know with whatever's happening in that present moment whatever you're feeling it will help contribute in a positive way towards the overall goal or vision that you have. For the sake of the example that I'm giving, if you're in a room full of people that you want to leave a good impression on because it potentially could be good for your career, if you're able to show up in the same way you would with your friends who like love having you around and, you know, find you hilarious or interesting, then those those people who, you know, you're trying to impress, if you're able to show up in that same way where you're just relaxed and talking to them like you've known them for years, they're probably going to react the same way of loving you and wanting you to be around. And then you actually have gotten what you wanted rather than tripping on what the actual outcome was. You know what I mean? Like instead of of bugging on like what the right thing to say or whatever it was, you're just being yourself in a genuine way. You're probably actually going to get that greater outcome that you're striving for. I guess that's what I was trying to get to. And then obviously this is also ego in the other way of like, you know, I don't want to look too, I don't, I'm too proud, you know, to potentially look stupid. So rather than like even risk looking dumb, I'm not going to do or say anything at all. And obviously, we all know that gets you absolutely nowhere, right? Like, that's a part of the risk. You have to be unafraid of, of making an ass of yourself publicly, essentially, right? Or failing publicly. Because the reality is, if you're trying to do big or great things, like, you are either going to succeed in a great way, in a big way, or you're going to fail in a bigger or great way. I would rather, but I would rather risk that big failure of failing in a gigantic way, knowing that potentially I could also succeed in a big or gigantic way. And let's see, actually, the last one to read, uh, the homie Jade, she really put this in a beautiful, beautiful way. At Jade underscore Jirani, she says, uh, learning how to navigate our egos is or should be a rite of passage in adults. So much of our self-awareness in who we perceive ourselves to be. The collective society as a whole could benefit from checking our egos before approaching and interacting with others, though. At its best, it builds us up and provides a sense of confidence to go after our dreams. On the twofold, it can break us when it's damaged because we associate our ego with our, quote, self. Instead of just understanding it's just a mirror to our perceptions, learn to make your ego serve you, but don't serve it. We could all benefit from, quote, getting over ourselves now and then, see the bigger picture. I think that's such a beautiful, beautiful way to to kind of sum it up to a degree, right? Like you obviously have to have confidence in yourself to do anything, right? To achieve anything. It's healthy to have confidence in yourself. So the ego is beneficial in that sense. But when you allow the ego to take control at all times and take the wheel at all times, that's when you begin to have an issue. That's where this idea of overimportance comes from, right? That's where this idea of entitlement comes from. And I love how she ended it talking about seeing the bigger picture, right? Because unfortunately, what happens when we allow our ego to lead, it begins to blind us from seeing anything other than, and kind of borrowing from what she said, 
seeing anything other than the perception that we our ego has created of ourselves. So it begins to make decisions for us in that way, guides the way that we move in that way, and potentially could block blessings because it lost its grip with reality. And thank y'all so much for participating in this. There were a bunch of more I didn't get a chance to get to. Uh, but of course, I always appreciate y'all chim chiming in on these conversations at DJ Dramos on Instagram. If you want to be a part of these convos. And with that said, man, let's tie it all up, wrap it up in a neat little bow in a segment we call Conclusion Stew. Time for Conclusion Stew. All right, so I, I hope this one was super beneficial. I feel like for me, it gen this like was an episode where I genuinely was just like talking and I felt like I was unpacking shit about myself ex and experiences and like enlightening myself as I was just like listening to some of the, you know, reading some of the quotes and, and kind of allowing my brain to to interpret it, you know. So I hope that that was uh, beneficial for y'all and it wasn't just me mumbling to myself. But it's all about the work, right? Like that's really what what matters at the end of the day and and reminding yourself that there's no right way to get anywhere you know when you talk about your ego and the way that ryan holiday talks about it you know saying quote an unhealthy belief in your own importance like to me when you have this unhealthy belief in your own importance it's very easy to get in your own way because i think there are a lot of times where opportunities will come to us blessings will come to us but they won't come in the form you know or the shape uh or, or the clear picture that we would assume they would come in right so like it's easy to see something kind of pop up and and it doesn't look the way you thought it would and you kind of just take it for granted you know or you um kind of you know stick your nose up and you might very well be missing out on a potential opportunity that actually helps get you to where you want to go and, I, and actually this is a really dumb example but it, it it brings me to this but i think it's a perfect kind of like uh you know analogy for this don't ask me why I somehow like on YouTube and did not click ended up clicking on something about love and hip hop. And it was this producer, I think it was a one um, was talk. I don't, it might have been him. I don't know the fuck. It was. I don't watch love and hip hop. But I think it was a one um, was talking to Chanel West Coast, who apparently is on love and hip hop. Uh, and she was basically asking him to like get in the studio. And his response was when I was coming up as a producer, nobody really knew who I was. I approached you about working on some music together. And you dissed me. So now that I'm popping, I don't want to work with you. And to me, this is a perfect example, as dumb as it is, of someone's ego causing them to have this unhealthy belief in their own importance, not being able to see the bigger picture of things and realize that in this scenario, you never know who's going to be that next person to pop off. And now, because you were an asshole to them in the past, they have no reason to open that door for you. And you have potentially missed out on a great opportunity by letting your ego lead the way. And last thing I'll say is lesson from Drake. There's always work to be done, regardless of what level of success you think you've achieved. If you generally want more success and inevitably further greatness in your life, the work never stops. That, exactly that Jay-Z quote. He said, you can want success all you want, but to get it, you can't falter, you can't slip, you can't sleep. One eye open, for real, and forever, right? Like greatness means you're always working, always learning. You always have somebody you can learn from, right? You are never so great that you can't be taught a lesson. And that's how you continue to improve. As opposed to if your ego is steering the wheel, they're going to keep telling you that you are already the greatest and eventually you're just going to sit back and watch as everybody else passes you because you've stunted your own growth by allowing your ego to take control. And with that said, thank y'all so much for tuning into another episode. I appreciate y'all. I'm really excited these next couple of weeks, man, for, for the podcast. I have some really great guests coming on here uh, and not just for the Thursday trends episode, but also for some topics to kind of really genuinely do some really big deep dives into, uh, some some things that are really affecting our communities, you know. So I'm really excited about that. I've been working really hard on um, trying to book some some more guests that I think would really add some value outside of just tackling some of those Thursday trends episodes that I enjoy doing so much. Um, so you, you know, look out for that. I'm very much excited. Until then, be safe. Peace.